All of these soaps that you see pictured here are made with wood ash. This is uh, uh, definitely what I've been most fascinated with, and it's just like taking me down some really strange rabbit holes. And I got them right here. I took that picture about 10 minutes before we started. Compare those soaps. Softer than you think? Yeah, this is looks like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so um, there's a, a, a pretty stark difference between those, those soaps. It looks like it's really, really soft. The but stuff in the, in the Tupperware thing is like, it's so soft, I, you know, I'd scoop it out with a spoon before I could cut it into a, you know, a slice. That stuff was made a month ago. The one that's really crusty looking was made back in June. And the, the other stuff was about, yeah, about a month ago now. It's not Irish Spring. It's definitely not Irish Spring. Saponification <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> is, um, we're actually going to try, if you guys want to stick around, I brought my supplies, and I thought maybe we could make some soap out of um, wood ashes here tonight, if you want to. We're not going to be able to finish it, but... Uh, but we'll get pretty, pretty close, depending on how late you guys want to stay. Saponification is the process of making soap. It is, it is the central uh, reaction that's happening. When you mix a triglyceride fatty acid with a strong base, okay, it's going to uh, form a salt. So you're taking an acid and you're mixing in an alkaline source and you're going to end up with a salt. This soap molecule up here is sodium stearate. This is the stearic acid, triglyceride fatty acid, that is commonly found in beef tallow or cocoa butter. And it is a sodium salt of that. So what they're doing is taking um, a fat that is predominantly stearic acid, like beef tallow, and adding sodium hydroxide to that. Now that's a very tight chemical reaction. You, you, you got to stay within a range or you're going to have soap that is like still fat and feels really oily and barely works. Or you're going to have soap if you go in the opposite direction and you add too much of your hydroxide ions to that mix, you're going to end up with something that is going to be very caustic and it's going to burn your skin. It's going to be a little bit dangerous to use. So most home soap makers are always going to err on the side of caution, and they're going to have a little bit of excess fat in their soaps, usually around 5%. These soaps are kind of a wild card. It's because we don't know the actual alkalinity value of the lye water. Now, you can get online, and you can look at charts and figures, and you can say, oh, I've got beef tallow. And you can get a really pretty good approximation of what its acid value is in that uh, saponification um, process. But your lye water is kind of a tricky one. Um, normally, home soap makers are going to use lye, sodium hydroxide, or potassium hydroxide. And they're going to know that it's a, 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 pur a purity that they can count on. And for them, their, their fatty acid equation is always the wild card. So if I mix these oils with this, you know, how does, how, what kind of soap am I going to get? Um, we don't have constants on either side of that. We don't know how strong our alkali is. We don't really know what our acid is. So that's why it's going to be a wild card. I'm going to show you a few ways that we can play with that. And um, uh, experienced soap makers are going to recognize these things right away, um, but, but still be perennially frustrated with uh, unpredictable results making wood ash soap. Um, unsaturated fats are going to make soft soaps, like the one in that uh, tub is Crisco. Straight up Walmart cheap Crisco. It's, you know, the cheapest stuff I could find. I wanted to see what would happen. Um, that other stuff is mostly lamb tallow um, and uh, rendered lamb fat. And uh, I would expect that to make a very hard bar of soap. If I made a, a, a lamb fat soap out of sodium, it would be a very hard bar that I could shave into powder or something like that. Um, if I was to make a lamb fat soap out of potassium, it would be a, a really kind of a um, thick liquid soap. Um, liquid soaps is kind of where most of my attention has been because I've got a lot of old olive oil. And, um, and I love playing with that old olive oil and making the liquid soap with the potassium hydroxide. 
And then I've been experimenting with making liquid soaps out of um, wood ashes, and that's much harder. So going back to basics, uh, how soap works, because that third line there, right? It's both polar and non-polar solvent. Yeah, yeah, I just walked right over that. Um, look at this long hydrocarbon tail. It's basically going to mix with fat, OK? And this little short polar uh, head on this molecule is going to be soluble with water. So you've got something that is soluble in water but still cuts fat. You know, if you mix fat and water, it's just going to separate, right? So now you've got a little molecule that comes in and basically just lifts up uh, fat molecules and then, um, and then the front of that will dissolve in water. So you're not actually soluble. You know, when you wash your, wash your fat up off your hands, you're not actually solubilizing that fat, but you're taking it and just cutting it up into tiny, tiny, tiny molecules and basically making a uh, emulsion, I think is the right word there. Could you use baking grease? To make soap? Yeah, yeah baking definitely. Grease? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, a lot of people use lard to make soap. Um, baking grease, in terms of the animal fats, that's going to be a softer soap. And uh, put your nose over this. This one in particular, I, I think it still smells. It smelled a month ago. Yeah, smell that. What are you smelling? You're smelling lamb fat. Oh. Yeah. So I can only imagine that applied to bacon grease. Um, so let's expect some variability, and we'll can kind of play with that. Um, the really commonly referenced recipe online, get online and Google, I want to make wood ash soap. And, and definitely, you're going to be fumbled oh. into uh, Grandpappy's website, which I love that. Uh, you know, love the idea of Grandpappy sitting down and writing this up, published online. But um, he says boil average wood ash water. Um, OK, major variable there already. Um, at one gallon down to 3 eighths of a cup. So my hunch is that you're taking some very dilute material and you're boiling it down to something that's pretty strong. And uh, 3 quarters cup of that is going to mix with 2 cups of warm fat. Um, you can get online and see his whole process. Um, it, it's pretty, it, it's a full process. It's nice. What frustrates me there is that he doesn't really um, acknowledge the idea of testing your lye water or your ash water. Um, he, he assumes that if you follow his method for extracting ash water, that it's all going to be the same. I, I'll contest that based on my own um, test at home. My first attempt was was boiling down to um, a very thick, thick boil. Um, basically taking my ash water and boiling it down to almost all the way, where you get to this point where it's this really kind of off smell, thick rolling boil. And then uh, that was measured on my little uh, scale at 1.2 grams per milliliter. And um, let's see how accurate that still is. Let me show you, because I think this is kind of important. Um, I bought this scale um, for less than $50. And it's been quite a bit of fun for me. Um, I'm going to weigh my graduated cylinder and tear to zero. And this is some strong stuff. I'm going to be cautious here. Back in June, when I did this first, is when I boiled this down and originally measured it at 1.2 grams per milliliter. So we can see if that's still the same. So what I'm going to do is actually um, just measure out 10 milliliters and keep the math simple here. Are you saying you know that there's 1 point whatever grams of potassium carbonate in there? No, I don't know that. What's the 1 no, this is just a, a way, measuring the density of this liquid oh. is one way to get a guess on um, its strength, its alkali strength. Oh. So it's like specific gravity? It is, it's exactly what it is. Yeah, that's all we're doing here. I don't know if normal, what is that hydrometer is going to work within that range. Um, so, I, you know, I use this for making my soap. So it's been pretty easy for doing this. Um, so on this, I'm going to weigh it out 10. I'm going to weigh this twice. I'm going to use my uh, dropper and get it down to 10. And then I'm going to um, add it to this. 
And this isn't, you know, a normal chemist, I think, would probably uh, say that this is too inaccurate to really work with. But I should expect that to be around 12.4. And I've got to get real close to see where I'm at. A little bit more. Okay. Yeah, I'm getting 12.2. Not exactly accurate. Uh, uh, maybe a more accurate way to do this would be to use a smaller graduated cylinder where the lines are a little bit clearer. Um, you guys just take a, a, a chemist smell. Don't take a huge deep breath on this. But notice the, the smell of that. Mm-hmm. Do you guys get any any amount of vanilla or anything like that in there? Sweet. Kind of a kind of a sweet smell. Yeah, yeah it's actually not bad. Yeah. yeah. It's like tea. Tea something. Yeah, yeah. It smells pretty bad when it starts burning. I'll I'll say that. If you get it, you know, that during that thick rolling boil, if it bubbles over on your pot, it's going to smell pretty bad. Okay, so this is a pretty strong lye water. I've determined that um, that I think that this is too strong. Ash water, yeah, thank you, thank you, yeah. I'm trying to get in the habit of saying that. My second attempt at making soap, um, third attempt actually, were these. And um, I determined that I, I think based on my first attempt, I was way too strong on my ash water and uh, did not have enough actual water mixed in, um, enough to actually get the alkali to mix with the fat um, in a proper amount of time. Basically what happened was the alkali mixed with the fat and turned to a solid before it actually had a chance to fully mix. Have you tried it yet? Tried this soap? Yeah, like used it? I have. Yeah, not, not in the shower. I've used this to wash my hands and I'll tell you, it still smells like land fat and it burns, okay? <laughs> so, so, so it's, uh, it's uh, that's, that is telling me that it's not mixed. Right, so that it, it started the reaction, but it wasn't fully swirled in there enough. It's kind of like taking a bite out of your biscuit and getting a getting a lump of baking powder. You know what I mean? <laughs> so, don't, don't make soap for your Christmas presents unless you really know what you're doing. Right? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Don't, don't make soap. Don't make ash soap. Yeah, to anybody <laughs> except your enemies, I guess. So, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, what I determined uh, basically on my last go at this was that I needed to add quite a bit more water and take it, take it a little bit slower and make sure things can properly mix. If I add excess water, no problem. It's going to evaporate off. It's going to boil off over time. It just might take me a couple hours to make that soap, which is pretty normal. 